get out of this house. In the name of Jesus. You have no right to be here. You have no authority here. And we praise you right now for freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, if you believe God this morning, can we give him praise? You may take your seats in his presence. I, um, I thank God for confirmation this morning. And God is so phenomenal. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. If you don't have your Bible, then you got your phone. Give God praise. Hallelujah. This is the Amplified, Dre, if you don't mind. To our Facebook family, good morning to you this morning. Thank you so much for taking the time to just stop in and be with us today. I believe that this is a God encounter for you, so don't budge, don't move, stay with us. And I believe that everything you need, you're going to leave with. In Jesus' name we pray. Victory, can we seal that with amen for our Facebook family? Amen. Praise God. I do see some people standing in honor of the word. Why don't we all stand in honor of the word this morning? Amen. We honor God. His word is infallible. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Glory to God. Verse 5. It says here. Uh, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Now, can you take it to the King James Version for me real quick, please? It says here in the King James Version, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Come on, say amen for the word this morning. You may take your seats. The title of this message is The Fight Against Depression. One thought, one choice, one action at a time. The Fight Against Depression. So I am I'm astonished today because Wednesday night, um, Pastor Brian taught a phenomenal message, uh, and he talked about confessions and the power that we have um, and the ability that we have to create our atmosphere with our words. And he talked about, he began talking about depression, um, and he, he touched on some things, and as he was talking, everything in me started jumping. And I even said to my sister, I said, I believe the Lord wants to deal with depression on Sunday. That's what I, and, and, and I said, but I don't want to feel like I'm coming off the tail of Brian's message. So uh, she said, listen, if you hear God say it, you go with it. And so I'm convinced today that I heard him clearly on Wednesday because depression is one of those things. There is no music. There is no, no words that can lift the heaviness of depression. Depression is one of those things that you have to deal with, with the word of God, or you will die while you working, walking around, taking care of your kids, and you will find yourself slowly dying day by day. Depression is a real thing. I was astonished when I began to really look into the statistics on depression. 17.3 million American adults battle depression. It's more prevalent in women than it is in men. And I think that's only because the men not talking about it. I believe there's more depressed men than that. Somebody say amen. One point, listen to this, 1.9 million children between the ages of 3 and 17 have been, hear me, diagnosed with depression. That don't deal with the ones that haven't been diagnosed. Because half of us barely go to the doctor when we have a heart attack. Face numb, can't feel on the left side, and just putting ice on it. Because half of us don't have the insurance. Come on, listen. Half of us don't have the insurance 
to be able to go confidently without going to the emergency room to get some help. Hello, somebody in here. And so we have all these things working against us. Listen, it says women with depression have an increased risk of low bone mass that leads to osteoporosis and more fractures. 17% more women with major depression battle low bone mass and brittle bones compared to the 2% of women without depression who battle it. Depression affects every single piece of your body. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? It's almost like you, you want to get up, but you can't. You want to laugh, but you can't. You'll be in a room full of people and feel like you in a bubble looking at them and living a happy life. Ooh, living a happy life and, and don't nobody hear or see you. Depression is like a coat that you wear regardless of the seasons. I am convinced that it is a tool that the enemy has created, a spirit that the enemy has created to destroy us from reaching our destiny. You are not depressed just because depression runs in your family. You are depressed because you are called by God to do, phenom to do phenomenal things. And the enemy is determined to keep your mind wrapped in sadness so that you cannot see past your right now. Depression won't let you see past right now. Depression only shows you what you're living in currently. But I declare the Bible says that eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard the things and or imagine the things that he has prepared for you. So you got to understand that anything you can't shake on your own is not a feeling, it's a spirit. It's not a feeling, it's a spirit. It's a spirit that you can't see, but it sees you. And it walks with you, and it, it sits with you, and it, it eats dinner with you, and it, it gets in the shower when you get in the shower. It, it stands with you at work. It's always with you. It's always by you. And the thing about it is that when you don't realize what's happening, you're even more susceptible. When you don't realize how bad it is, you, you see, when you don't know, that's why I told you before, you, gotta, you have to identify the name of the spirit that's sitting on you. Because if you don't call it by name, it won't answer. So if you're busy praying about finances, you're not sad about finances for real. That's just getting some budget help. It's sadness and depression that make you look at your finances in a demented perception. God, I give you glory. It is, it is, it is the spirit of depression that silently walks with you. God, I bless you. Because we got to see this thing for what it really is. No longer will we walk around blind to what's happening in the spirit realm. Yes, I wish I could open up a curtain and show you the demons that have a name tag on it with your name on it. I wish I could show you, but I can't. But you got to trust me and believe. You got to trust. If you don't want to trust me, trust God. To know that as much as he has a plan for your life, the enemy is aware of the power that you hold. The only one that's missing in the equation is you knowing the power that you hold. When you don't know the power that you hold, you walk around letting the enemy be your puppet master. Holding you, make you sad, make you happy. Today's a good day, not a good day. Don't want to talk to nobody. Don't want to be around nobody. Want to be with my friends. Want to be in love. I hate love. You just an emotional roller coaster being operated by the puppet master called Beelzebub, Lucifer, Satan. You are being used and moved and rocked and rolled by a devil that ain't got no authority in your life. He don't 
don't have no authority in your life. You got to hear what I'm saying today. You scared of a devil that's scared of you. You worried about somebody that's worried that if you get your mind right, if you get your head on straight, you will be able to shut the kingdom of hell down. You concerned about somebody that's shaking in his boots every time you confess the word of God. He's concerned. He's worried about you because you are the problem. You... You're the one with the power. You, you're the one with the destiny. You, you're the one with a purpose. You, you're the one that's called to shake hell down to nothing. But the more he can keep your mind on things that don't even count, the less he got to worry about your destiny. Listen to me. There is freedom. For you. Depression will cause you to make choices in your flesh to try to feel better. Depression will make you go back to drinking after you ain't drank in a long time. Depression will make you sleep with somebody that you wouldn't have never slept with if you wasn't sad. Depression, uh-huh, yeah, think about it, yeah, be like, why did I do that? Because you was depressed, yeah, that's why. Depression clouds your vision. Depression clouds your vision so you can't see. Depression changes the way you see so that it's always from a demented negative perspective depression will make you use drugs that you never thought you would use I always say to people don't you never say never don't you never say what you won't do because I promise you that's the main thing you are gonna find yourself doing because depression Make sure that it drags you down a bottomless hole that you can't get out of. Oh, but over 2,000 years ago, God knew you were going to need. He knew you were going to need an alliance. He knew you was going to need some help. So he sent his son to take on the spirit of depression at the cross. He sent his son to say, not my will. It cannot be shined. It cannot be but thy will be done, oh God. He sent his son to bear the stripes of depression. He sent his son to take the lashes of depression and anxiety. Anxiety is connected to depression. They are brothers and sisters. When you feel panic attacks and feel like you can't breathe in a room when chaos get around, that is a trick of the enemy used to destroy you. But the blood of Jesus is still thick enough. Enough. It's still strong enough to handle depression. It's thick enough. It's still strong enough. It says that one point something million elderly adults battle with depression. Because when life begins to change and it's out of your control, and you can't do nothing about it. You can't help but get sad. When you lose a loved one that you've been with for over 40 years, you can't help but feel depressed. Depression grabs a hold of you. When, when you fall in love with somebody and they don't follow through and they break your heart and you gave everything you had to give, depression says, ooh, there's my window. Let me jump on in there. When your child break your heart or make a fool out of you and you already battled depression over the years but you've been walking in freedom, depression sees a window and says, oh, there's my window. When you're going through hell, 
hell at work, at home, when you're going through hell, everywhere you go, every time your phone rings, somebody got a problem. And every time you pick it up, you the solution. Depression says, oh, let me get in there before she get her mind right. Because if I can get in there before she get her mind right, I ain't got to worry about the after. Hand me on those altar cloths. There's freedom for you, but you got to choose it. And I'm so glad the young people are up here today. Because you don't have to live sad. Uh -huh, just one. You don't have to live sad. So, I want to show you something, how depression works. When you battle a spirit of depression... You can tell people how good God is with depression wrapped around you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you could build somebody up. God is faithful. He's amazing. He's phenomenal. He's wonderful. Oh, you be encouraged now. No, God's got your back now. Still wearing a cloak of depression. Oh, you, you need me to pray for you? Come here, let me pray for you. Oh, God, come here, let me pray for you. Oh, God, I thank you. You move by your power. Come on, uh-uh, we believe God today. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood in the name of, now be encouraged. And still holding your cloak of depression. Oh, today's Monday. I got to go to prayer today. Hey, praise the Lord, Pastor Phil. I'm here to pray. Glory to God. We're going to tear heaven down. And when you feel like it's falling, you catch it and put it back on because you're so, you so used to wearing it that not having it on is scary. You're so used to having it with you that not having it on scare you to death because you don't understand that freedom requires a different lifestyle. Yeah. This is what we do. We, we, we get people saying, come on, come on, somebody, get, Jesus loves you. Get, come on, let him come into your heart. In the name of Jesus, he's with you. And come on, high five. You did it. You got Jesus. Come on, don't knock my cloak off. Don't knock my depression off. How? How are we winning people to freedom but bound? How? How? How, how, how can I help you get to freedom? But when I get in my car, I cry myself all the way home. How? What kind of blood did Jesus shed? Was it thin blood? Was it just barely enough blood for the one that just got delivered? Or was it enough blood for me? It's enough blood for me too. So when I feel the weight of this yoke of depression, I got to open up my mouth and declare that I have a sound mind. I have a mind that's full of power. A mind that's full of word, and you cannot control me. I leave it on the altar. But you see, you got to choose to take it off. You got to choose to take it off. Um, because, see, when, when you're used to it, it's comfortable and it's convenient. <laughs> Uh-huh, because you can use it as your reason as to why you don't come to prayer. You can use it as your reason as to why you don't want to get involved in no ministries. You can use it as your reason as to why you don't want to come to the men's meeting or you don't want to be over the women's department. You can use it conveniently until it's choking the life out of you. Then you want to call me and want to have a meeting behind closed doors. I don't want to have no meeting behind closed doors because we meet here every Sunday and the blood is at the altar and freedom belongs to you if you you choose it. It's your choice. It could make it makes me sad if you don't choose it, but it's your choice. You want to sit back and look like evil Evelyn? It's your choice. You want to walk around and don't can't, can't hug nobody, don't want no love. Listen, it's your choice. And I will not let you burden my mind with your inability to walk into freedom.
The movie Harriet Tubman is it, it, out. And it talked about Harriet, her story, and how she made a decision that she was coming out of bondage no matter what. And, and it wasn't no easy come out of bondage. It wasn't like, excuse me, master. To, you know what? I decided this is not working for me, so I'm going to go ahead and get me and my family. We're going to try something else down the road. No. Harriet had to jump off a bridge into water without a bottom. Not knowing if she was going to make it or not. Not knowing what was on the other side of that choice. But she knew that this life. I don't know what the other side holds. But this life right here, I done had about enough. So I'm, I'm, I'm upset enough. I'm, what, 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 what the season folks say. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Then you're going to come on out. Uh -huh. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's the moment you're going to change. I remember my mom used to tell me some stuff and I'd be like, you don't understand. You don't know him like I know him. You don't know the kind of love we have. You don't know how unconditional this situation is. She said, you know what, little girl? <laughs> when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're going to let me know. When you really get sick and tired of this life, you will jump off into nothing, trusting that the God who came after you first, he will catch you and keep you from falling. Come on in here. It catch you. He will catch you and keep you from falling. And it may feel like it's a long fall, but I declare that ain't no way he gave his son and gave the sacrifice that he made for let, to let you hit the bottom. You see, the fear is, what does the other side look like? You don't have to know that. All you got to do is trust the God who came after you first. Listen, I know that it's the holiday season. I know that it ain't a happy holidays for some of y'all. I didn't say us because I don't declare it over my life. I declare that if I got to draw a smile on my face, joy is going to be my portion. Do you understand me? All the way from here to here like the joker walking around. I promise you. That's right. Every time I look at it, it tears. I'm going to laugh because I got a whole smile drawn all the way across here. Because you choose joy. See, this is why we felt the heaviness throughout the service and earlier. Because the spirit of depression is a chief. It's a big demon. It ain't no baby imp. It ain't no little bitty baby imp that, that come on, hold my hand. No, this joint can sit on you like a 90,000 pound man. And no matter what song we sing, no matter how much we jump, you find yourself unable to connect because of the weight that sits on your back. But what I'm challenging you to do today is like I threw that spirit of depression on the altar. I'm challenging you to lay that depression and that anxiety on the altar and leave it there. Listen to me and I'm almost finished. Every single battle and victory begins in your mind. It starts right up here. Chaos starts right up here. And what you hear, you hear things like, oh my God, I just can't believe I got all this stuff to do today. It's just too much. It's just too much for me to handle today. I'm just not in the mood for this today. Um, I got to do this. I, I don't want to deal with these. Are, you haven't even opened your mouth yet. These are the thoughts that you hear. Because here's the trick. The enemy can't do anything unless you open your mouth and you agree with what he said. It is not you that you hear in your head. It is the enemy Making his voice sound like yours. To make you believe that you talking to yourself like that. But I declare that if you already said joy is your portion. When you hear the enemy talking stupid in your ear. 
You say, devil, you a liar. I feel good today. Devil, you a liar. The joy of the Lord is my strength today. De de listen, I'm not telling you something that I read in a book. I'm telling you something that I have to live out every single day. Every, out, every second of my life, I have to talk back to the devil and tell him, shut your mouth talking to me. You have no authority to say anything to me, for I am a child of the most high God. You are trespassing on blood spilled territory. But if you just sit there and don't say nothing, he just has his way with you. Puppet master in you. You got, listen, you got three weeks left in this year. And in order for 2020 to be different than 2019, the only thing that's got to change first is your mind. If your mind changes, then your choices will follow. If your mind, you got three weeks. Because nobody knew that 2019 was going to bring what it brought. But because my mind had changed before it hit, when the enemy came in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord had something to raise up a standard and fight against the enemy. So I'm, I'm saying to you that you ain't got to live like you've been living. You don't have to do it. You just choosing to. But the, the Bible says that my people die from a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But now you know. Now we didn't talked about it. I, I, I tell my employees, if I didn't tell you, then I can't expect nothing from you. But the moment I tell you, try me. You better do exactly what we talked about. Or I'm going to hold you accountable for it. You have heard the word of God this morning. Now you may say, well, Pastor Daphne, how do I do it? How do I fight depression in real life outside of this church? You fight depression by meditating on the word of God. It ain't new day and night. What do you mean meditate? I mean, listen, we had new members discovery and we have a year reading plan for the Bible. If you don't have a plan to read the word, we will give you this piece of paper that will take you through the entire year so that every day you're reading portions of the word of God. David said, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not in the future sin against you. Hid is past tense, which means I was ready when the test came. You meditate on the word in the morning. But that means you got to change a couple things. That means you got to get up a little bit earlier. Huh? Give yourself an extra 30 minutes so you can read your word. All that getting up right before, 20 minutes before it's time for you to be at work, all of us got to change. And lift your hand if that got to change. Come on. Ain't no, don't, don't get dressed at night so you can just throw your shoes on and get out the door. We got to make some change. I only said that because my husband over there in the corner today. If he wasn't here today, I wouldn't have said that. But he know I'll be getting up right at the last minute. Tomorrow, don't be late. <laughs> but you got to change some things. See, because I can't just preach the word to you and not give you practical application. Mm -hmm. So you have to change some things. So we have to get up a little bit earlier in the morning. Because whatever you start your day with is going to determine the atmosphere of your day. So if you start your day with the word of God, the enemy, uh, he already see that he got something. He, you got something on him already. So you get the word in there, okay? And if you have certain things that are really battling you, then you Google scriptures. Scriptures on anxiety. Scriptures on fear. Come on. It's all, everybody got a smartphone or a friend with a smartphone. Uh, hey, hello, can you Google me some scriptures on being mad at my sister? Scriptures on conflict. And you take those scriptures and you meditate on them all day in the morning. And then at nighttime, you got to see, you got to change some things. So you got to turn the TV off so you can give yourself an extra half hour so you can spend some time with the Lord before you go to bed. 
Huh? See, because it's not just talking. It's actions. Faith without works is Huh? What else do I need to do? So we say, number one, you got to meditate on the word day and night. You got to change your environment. Listen, do you see, did you see how we set the atmosphere for praise and worship this morning? And how God was able to come in? You can do that in your dining room and in your kitchen. If you just begin to worship God, Father, I love you. Father, I bless you. There's nobody like you. He comes and he inhabits in your house and sits down with you in your house. And when you create an atmosphere of worship, foolishness don't feel comfortable. So now you're not on the emotional roller coaster. When the kids acting all crazy, you got praise and worship playing in the background. You can't, you might, last night at the Christmas party, we listened to This Christmas by Chris Brown, right? Only because I like that version. And so I looked up and then Chris was doing something else, some gyrating with his pelvis. Had to turn that off. Why? Because if anything popped off, I needed my mind to be this mind being me. That's also in Christ Jesus. You can't listen to all kind of music and make the change. Hear what I'm saying today? You got to have some praise and worship on that playlist. You can't, you can't, you can't, can't, can't listen. Well, we married, so we, I got to listen to the Uchi Kuchi Booty music. No, you battling with depression. You need to have some friend of God. Ain't nobody like Jesus. Kirk Franklin, just for me. Come on, Fred Hammond, no weapon. You got to put something on that playlist because when you put those earbuds in your ear, that word is going into your mind and it's changing your responses. So you got to put the right stuff in so the right stuff come out. So you make some changes. Meditate on the word day and night. Change the atmosphere. Then you make a decision to stick to the decision that you made. That depression has no authority over your life. There have been times when the enemy, and I, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it. I have always had this thing where stuff did not look right, it would make my skin crawl. And I don't know, it goes through my family. Brittany, don't you have it? You have it sometimes too? And I mean like it's serious, like we had to take like a Benadryl. Like it's just, because it's just something about stuff that ain't right, that I don't know. Now I'm an emergency room nurse. I can take blood, guts, brains, anything, but let, a, let something be bubbling on your arm. I gotta take a minute to pull myself together. You see, I'm starting to scratch right now. You see that? But what has happened? <laughs> But I had, to, I had to realize that it was after my mother passed that I would be up in the evenings and I had told my husband about it. I said, babe, the enemy be putting images in my head of stuff that is deplorable. I mean, horrible images. Like, not nasty. I'm not talking about like, you know, doing nasty stuff. I'm talking about like bugs on your legs and like stuff that's just really horrible. And I literally would be up three-fourths of the night trying to get my head, get those images out of my head. And I realized that this had been, this started after my mother passed. And so at night, I would battle and I would tell the enemy, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. But he wasn't moving. And I didn't understand why he wasn't moving until I realized that I did not give him specific instructions. When I began to say to him, Satan, in the name of Jesus, because at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every knee will acknowledge at the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command you to erase every sick image that you trying to put in my head. You have no authority to even be in my mind. For I am the child of the Most High King. I am his daughter and I have a sound mind. And the blood of Jesus has already strangled you. Get out of my head so I can go to sleep. Within moments, total freedom. Now hear me though, it's not that he don't try to come back. When he try to catch me off guard, I'm back on my post. 
Because what he does is he'll catch you when you're not thinking about it and get it back going again. And then there you go, back in the same cycle. But I'm not giving up my sleep, not another. I need my sleep. Anybody needs your sleep? Some of you all been tossing and turning. Not because of the stuff that I'm battling with, but because of thoughts of fear and anxiety and sadness and depression and frustration. If that is you in this house, I want you to come down to this altar. We're going to get free today. We're going to get free today. It don't take long. You know who you are. If it's you, come on down. Glory to God. Glory to God. There is no shame. There is no shame. There is no shame. There is no guilt. There is only freedom. Hallelujah. There is only freedom. You will not live a life of sadness and depression. You will take your life back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just give me one single line. Come on down this way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Listen, before we do this prayer, if you are in here today and you know that there are some areas, and this includes y'all, that you need to get right with your life with Christ, that you need to get an alignment. You got this question mark of whether or not he come back. When he comes, will you be ready to go? We want to handle that. All you got to do is accept him as your personal savior and get back in alignment. If that's you, lift your hands. Let the Lord see that you say, and that's me. And I got to get my life right. I got to get my, I see your hand. I got to get myself together. I see your hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now listen, if you have prayed this prayer before and you just messed up, the blood is already applied. And when you mess up, you ask him to forgive you and you get back on track. But this is that moment when we've been off track for some time now and we're going to get it back together. Now repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, it's me. I'm here. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you sent Jesus to die for me and he rose for me so that I can live forever with you. Forgive me for not keeping you number one for every sin I've done that's hurt you. Come on back into my heart. Live in me and help me to live in you from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Now somebody say amen. Now we're getting ready to pray for you. And we are binding up the spirit of depression and anxiety.